there is too much talk and very little action. So we really need to make sure that those who have the responsibility of investigating and prosecuting acts of corruption, you know, sit up and save the nation from the millions and dollars of cities that we are losing. The Dean of School of Information and Communication Studies at the University of Ghana, Legon, Professor Audrey Gajekbo, rather expressed worry about how some institutions have failed in dealing with the situation. I am confounded. I don't understand, like many, many Ghanaians, why it is that when we have such huge um, incidents of corruption, we are promised that something will be done, and then it's as though they are hoping that then we will forget, and, and, and then life continues as normal. If we continue not to have sanctions, clear sanctions for corruption, there would be no disincentive uh, against corruption. Speaking to GH1 News, Senior Research Fellow, Center for Democratic Development, Dr. Kojo Asante, noted that the impressionistic demonstration was to lend the public the opportunity to appreciate the subject of corruption to join in to fight against it. What does 100 million look like when you begin to pack it up? So we, used, we, used, we decided to use the Central Medical Stores case, which was 350 million. Let every check check bag, every bag will be 1 million. And we have 350 of them. So that people can see how much money got bent, how much money we lost from that criminal act that people committed. Some stakeholders and students who caught up with the lenses of the news team shared their concerns. For an incident that according to the investigations report 350 million worth of drugs has been lost it shouldn't take three years for people who were perpetrators of this act to be brought to book there's always this notion that i'm supposed to pay something before i'm given the position so those at the top will always want you to pay something before you are giving what you're supposed to be giving yeah so for me i don't think is something they are tackling well in Ghana. Corruption Watch Ghana, the coalition of anti-corruption civil society organization, includes Ghana Integrity Initiative, Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition, and the African Center for International Law and Accountability. The pop-up event, which is the first anti-corruption program, is state to create awareness about the project, educate the public on the negative effects of corruption, and the role citizens can play in the anti-corruption fight. Frustrated customers of the Electricity Company of Ghana have threatened to embark on a demonstration if the company does not provide them with power. Many customers of the power distributor have been sleeping in darkness for days now as a result of network challenges with the prepaid meters. The aggrieved customers stormed the offices of the ECG to demand answers. <laughs> This was the situation at the Electricity Company of Ghana's project complex in Circle Accra. Their premises was filled with frustrated customers who vowed not to leave until their concerns are addressed. There was a loud uproar from customers when officials attempted to address the teeming crowd to calm their nerves. Police personnel were brought in to calm the irritated clients. For some who spoke to the news team, their cars could not be identified by the ECG officials and others suspected a foul play. Right now, if I move from here, I'm going home. I'm going to do legal connection. I was, I'm going to, I'm going to do legal connection. You see, you to come to my place. I say I tell someone, be one hundred twenty-four. That's my house number. They should come there. Right now, 
Some are determined. Let's now go over the telephone and speak with William Boating, who's a communications manager for ECG. Hello, good morning, Mr. Boating. Are you there? Yes, good morning. Great, good to have you. Now, um, I want to find out from you, listening to what the people have said, and even from personal experiences, was this not expected? I mean, if you go to buy prepaid credit on a normal day, you have to queue for so many hours with so many people. There have been days where you've been told the system is messing up, it's this, it's that. Was this particular situation not expected? Uh, no, but I don't know which particular issues we are talking about now. We had a challenge with the DOT system. Things expanded. Uh, around yesterday, yes, it became worse because the system was very slow. But we had a crash so we were able to spend at all until the Tuesday that we got our engineers to bring it back on track. As of yesterday, that started working smoothly. Uh, so I am setting my today first thing to clear all the backlog and uh, put everything back to normal. But, but um, the people, our, our news team was at your offices yesterday and then they were asked, the customers were asked to leave their telephone numbers and they claim nothing has been said to them from Sunday. That's what I'm saying, that yeah, it's true. It was Sunday that we detected that the server was not responding. So the entire Monday, customers who are on the BOT, prepayment vending system, they were able to vend at all. By Tuesday afternoon, we started working on it, and so we started there. But it was very sweet. And we came up yesterday when virtually all customers accepted converge at our project office where the server is located. And I'm saying that yesterday, by the evening of 5, we brought it back to uh, normal, so it was functioning very smooth. And so we worked deep into the night. In fact, we left there by 11 p.m. yesterday with the magic data. We are working and serving. So by today, we call them, and I'm sure by today, we'll clear the backlog. But let me say we'll come back to them. Mr. Barton, not to take you back, but let me ask you this. Do you have uh, backup systems for situations like this? So if this happens again, what do we do as a country? Because it looks like we are not prepared for emergencies like this. Do we have backup systems for such things? In virtually all systems that we have, unless you go into the IT, we have backup systems. We have a challenge with a server that virtually affected the backup. Some virus, they work on not our IC. And then the whole day, the could have reached. Unfortunately for us, it occurred around the time the big field customers invented a lot because it was the first week of the month. You know, and then we started having that uh, difficulty. We are talking about four districts where they use the DOT system. And so, but we work on this. Uh, after this one, yes, we have put in place some measures to ensure that the uh, okay. Okay, Mr. Bossi, just before I let you go, you say that the, the situation has been resolved. So if we go to the ECG office today, are you assuring us that we won't find a single soul there still frustrated? There will be, be customers coming to vent. I made mention of the fact that we got it running smoothly yesterday from 5 p.m. going. Around the midday when it converged in their large moment, we couldn't send them very fast because it was very soon. But then the engineers were still working on the system. By 5 o'clock, we started with this meeting. And so we went deep into the night. And as I told 11 p.m. we were sending customers to clear the bad luck. Those that left the cars with us, as we directed, we are working on them this morning. And those that want to vent, they can come because they send some money to the and we send them. So we are sure we will clear the bad luck and we connect the system to their various third party vending points. There will be no need for them to converge at the place again. They will be sending at the usual a normal place that we normally vend. So what, what happens to the people who have not had power since Sunday? Is there any form of compensation for them? I am unable to speak to that issue. We apologize uh, to the system that uh, so that uh, we hope to get them uh, okay, okay, and we are working very hard on that. 
All right, Mr. Boating, thank you very much. That was Mr. William Boating. He's the communications manager for ECG. And we'll be following up closely on that story. Let's move on to other stories now. Judgments in the nearly four-year-old financial misappropriation trial, popularly known as the JIDA trial, has been set for the 23rd of February 2018. The presiding judge at the Financial and Tax Court 2, Justice Efia Sewa Saribuche, proposed the date after a four-hour court sitting to ensure that state attorneys completed their cross-examination of the second accused person, Abuga Pele. Three state attorneys, led by Chief State Attorney Yvonne Kelson, subjected the second accused person to a host of questions aimed at getting the accused person to admit that there was no work done by Philip Asibit and his Goodwill International Ghana Limited, and that no due diligence was conducted by the then NYEP secretariats before payments were made. The first accused person, Philip Asibit, opened his defense after calling four defense witnesses. After his cross examination was completed by state prosecutors, the second accused person called only one defense witness after which he was led by his lawyer to give his examination in chief. Today in court, state prosecutors brought their cross-examination of the second accused to an end, paving way for the court to give specific timelines within which it will bring the entire trial to an end. To that end, the court ordered the lawyers representing both sides to file their addresses by the 26th of January 2018. The parties will then return to court nearly a month later on the 23rd of February for the judgment of the court. The Ministry of Children, Gender and Social Protection yesterday, in association with the UN Women, have launched the He for She campaign in Accra. The He for She campaign is aimed at mobilizing over 2 million men to stand up, support women and take actions that lead to empowerment for both men and women. Speaking at the media launch, Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, Oti Kwafi Sajaba, said the He for She campaign is centered on three key issues, affirmative action, ending negative traditional practices and economic empowerment of women. As the Beijing platform of action on gender equality, the sustainable goals, the Maputo protocol, the rights of women in Africa, all these have been ratified by many countries, including Ghana. However, Ghana has not achieved the minimum threshold of 30% representation in public and political life. And that is one of the reasons why we are advocating for the he for she in Ghana. She further called on all men and boys in Ghana to sign on to the he for she campaign to enable the country achieve its target of getting over 2 million boys and men as he for she advocates. Social media handles for the campaign is at he for she dot gh. Let's go for a break now. We return with business news. Founding President and CEO of Imani Africa has lashed out at Vice President Dr. Alhaji Mahmoud Baumia for hailing the Registrar General's online portal for registering businesses. Speaking to GH1 Business, Franklin Kujo said the ease of doing business is a careful case study of the electronic portal by Imani uh, officers have revealed that the system is fraught with challenges forcing many to resort to the manual process of the business registration. Isidore Kotufe is a project officer from Imani who conducted the intensive research on why Ghana continues to drop on the World Bank's ease of doing business rankings. He concluded Ghana is spending heavily on a software that is not working. So Ghana has not been doing what, it, what is right to maintain it as the gateway, whilst other countries, other countries 
you know, invested so much into innovations, Ghana was at a standstill. So even though Ghana did nothing wrong at a point in time, it was overtaken by other countries within the sub-regions. Founding president and CEO of Imani, Franklin Kujo, said it was not enough for the vice president to be touting the government's achievements on the new policies being rolled out without paying attention to the concerns of the end users. Just a common online platform, the Ghana e-portal payment system is dead. It's not working. We saw it. The Register General's Department's online uh, applications don't actually help you to register a business because you start the process, it takes you to another portal to go and get the TIN number. And the processes of generating TIN numbers themselves are offline. I think the government's main trust, really, if we're talking about moving beyond it. And what, on what basis did we invite Dr. Baumia to go to these offices to tell us that things are working normally when clearly it's, it's not working and these are the basics that people look out for when they are ranking countries on the ease of doing business and the competitiveness of a country the automated business processes at the registrar general's department was expected to reduce the human interface and turnaround time associated with the registration of businesses but this imani says is not working as expected the Ghana Revenue Authority has served management of Allied Fuel Station an order to pay them any outstanding debt owed IM Ace Fakadi, a construction company which owes GRA over 5 million Ghana cities. The construction company which accrued the debt within the last three years have fled the site upon the arrival of the tax officers. The first place of call was Kaiko Printing Press Limited, a printing house located at Adabraka. The facility was locked up. Officials of the GRA suspected workers at the printing press might have had a tip-off ahead of the arrival of the tax officers. The next place of call was the Allied Filling Station, located on the Jolu Road. Though the Allied Fuel Station was not directly involved in tax evasion, it is believed that a construction company who services the management of the filling station had employed for a project had evaded tax on materials being used for the construction work. The areas of default included company income tax, VAT withholding tax, rent and also penalty, which amounts to over 5 million cities over a period of three years. Upon reaching the construction site, officials were informed the contractor had abandoned the project for some time now and absconded. The project belongs to Allied Oil. So we have served a Ganeshi order on Allied Oil that any monies which are due to be paid to Ace Facade on the project, any outstanding money, should be directed to Ghana Revenue Authority. Uh, there are sections in the law. There's a Revenue Administration Act, Section 60 and 61. If you owe the government any monies, we have the right to authorize those who owe you to pay, redirect the payment to Ghana Revenue Authority. When questioned on why they had to wait for the debts of the construction company to accrue to over 5 million cities, this is what Yao Boabing had to say. The period of the tax audit, it was an audit conducted which is from 2014 to 2016. Now, when it was conducted, the taxpayer objected that I disagree with this. I dis Usually the amount was bigger. It, I disagree with this. You bring your tax auditors or your accountant and whatever they also have to disagree with. We sit down, agree to disagree. So we reach a final figure which you agree to which is undisputable. That is how come it seems it has lingered. Now, if you're wondering what the weather will look like in the next 24 hours, let's take a look at our weather update.
And that's all we have for you on GH Today News. My name is Sewa Mia. Thank you very much for watching. We are back at 11.30 with more news. Um, so now I'm going to hand over to Kafui Day who will bring you the rest of the show. Thank you very much, Sewa. I'm here with the news. Welcome to the 7th December edition of GH Today. My name is Kafui Day. Good to have you here. So a year ago to this day, we were getting ready to go to the polls. So it's a massive election throwback. <laughs> I'd like to find out from you what your thoughts are one year after the historic 2016 elections, which brought in the MPP, who won with a, a resounding margin of victory. What are your thoughts? What are the achievements over the last 12 months? We'd like to find out from you. Send us a WhatsApp on 246 020 580 We'll be giving you uh, flashbacks of those scenes on today's show. And later on in the third hour, we'll be talking about healthy eating practices during this festive season. You know how you put on those kilos and pounds, and then when January comes around, you're rushing off to the gym to go and sweat it off. Always remember that whatever you eat or drink, a moment on the lips, forever on the hips unless you go to the gym and take it off. So we'll be speaking with our dietitian in the last hour, who will be giving you tips on how to keep the weight where it is so that you don't put on too much weight during the festive season. Lots of things in the news. ECG customers in pitch black darkness since Sunday. A lot of stuff going on there. We heard the communications manager, Mr. William Boating, saying that the issue has been solved. But me, I'm always thinking about compensation. When our lives are messed up for close to 100 hours, Give us some free credit. Yeah, give us some, everybody, 50 CDs each free for the, what you've done to inconvenience us. Or we should be massing up at the offices of PURC, the Public Utilities and Regulatory Commission, who shouldn't just be the ones to announce increases in tariffs, but should be fighting for us, the customers, and making sure that we get compensated for inconvenience. That's something I want us to think about this morning, 7th December edition. If today's your birthday, well, you share it with, yeah, my little brother, yeah, Victor Day Jr., who is 37 years today, uh, God bless you. And uh, if you're in America, you're thinking about Pearl Harbor, because uh, on, on this day, a couple of years ago, in the 40s, the, the Japanese launched an attack on Pearl Harbor in, in America, and that brought about the entry of the USA into World War II. So some historical flashback there for you. Um, basically, so we're talking ECG, we're talking December 2016, a year on elections, and all the hot stories. Kumaka is also on our minds. We'll be giving you updates on that as well, the mysterious deaths at the Kumasi.